is to address the energy around each chakra. So that when I am doing my pranayama, first few cycles, I will keep seeing, not obviously with my eyes, with my mental eye, I keep looking at Muladhara chakra. Now, if I imagine the chakra as a circle, if I'm familiar with the shape, I would use that. But you go to different nine points. One breath is addressed to the front of the chakra. Next breath to the right. Next breath to the left. So those are three. Then three breaths in the front. Left, right, and center. Okay. Then go sideways. One, two. So three and three, six, seven, eight. These are nine points. And the last one, if you are doing it, is in the middle. Which is done with the sense of allowing the Kundalini energy to lift up. But do not attempt to lift that energy up. Just, you kind of see, the, is it lifting up? Watch. Don't make any artificial force there to lift that up. Generally, nothing bad would happen, but if something goes wrong, a doctor won't be able to help you. If you tell a doctor that you were doing this around your chakra, he will kind of look at you with, with uh, you know, great sympathy. <laughs> there is no such chakra. Nor am I saying that there is a chakra. But this is a center of energy that is imagined. Its reality comes around much later, and it is not physically real ever. But begin with Muladhara Chakra, then after a month or so, go to the next chakra, Swadhisthana Chakra. Then to the, what is it called? Huh? Manipura chakra, which is where the ribs come together. Yeah, again, it is an imaginary position. Yeah. In some Western books, I've seen attempt made to compare it to various plexus. Like this will be solar plexus, Manipura chakra. Don't do that. Because then what you are doing is you're trying to give physical reality to something that doesn't have physical reality. But with each chakra, you are addressing different psychological concepts of yourself, such as with Muladhara chakra, you are considering your relationship to material objects. So it begins to get into the philosophy. And by philosophy also, I don't mean something that you kind of it's imaginary or edified. That philosophy has reality. You are related to material objects around. Over a period, you want to see, looking at the various chakra, that none of these external things have a hold on you. Initially, all of them have a hold on you. If you like a physical object, it's your property. If you lose it, you get hurt. Which means there is complete confusion about how you got it in the first place. Any physical object that comes in your possession that you think you own, it is given to you by God and you must have that concept. So if you lose it, you say God's will. Not that you try to actively lose it. That, that's a very different way of approaching. Don't do that. If you want to go with that approach that you consciously, actively give up your positions, then you need to be near, a, you not need to be near Ramana. Ramana can't help. You need to be at a good ashram, under a good uh, sadhu. Not many of them left around and you'll have difficulty finding 
not go that route. Instead, I take whatever material I have, regard it as God-given gift that I am supposed to use for the benefit of everybody around me. So that I don't have a sense of my possession. And as you do it with, you know, safely in a way that doesn't create any particular difficulty for you, it should become a natural thing. Something that you would not sell for thousands of dollars is now giving away free. The, the whole transaction is at a very different level. Your relationship with your material possession should become like that. It is not just a physical possession. There is an energetic connection. But that is a sense of coming home. That is a sense of my relationship with all material objects. Begin to clear that. That's the Muladhara Chakra. So that apart from physically, whatever I do, there is a sense of getting into what is my relationship with the world around me. Physically first, then psychologically. When you're done these two, then you can look at spiritually what it is. Immediately jumping to philosophical relationship. Uh, can work, but it's like, you know, not going to kindergarten, first grade, third grade, you immediately want to go to sixth grade. It can work, but it is not systematic. Go with a systematic approach. Deal with one first, and you don't have to be an expert at one before you go to the next chapter. But you begin to address some fundamentals. If you do that with material possessions and with your psychological things also, then there is a chance of coming to understand that your breath, so-called prana, is a gift, is not your possession. To learn that you are already enlightened. It's not something that's going to happen to you. You know, no light goes on somewhere. You are already enlightened. What is in the way? Why doesn't the mind see it? What is in the way is your variety of relationships with the outer world, beginning with physical objects that you think you own. And this technique shown is to slowly get away from that. Only, as I said, don't be too quick and too harsh with it. Okay? Do it comfortably. Do it with proper understanding. So it's not another trauma to the mind. Mind is happy to, to have this kind of relationship. Today, for the rest of the time, when we do pranayama practice, by all means inhale air. But remember, it is not air you are inhaling. You are taking in something pretty phenomenal. And that's where the attention should go. As I said, that phenomenal part is to help you to see your relationship with a variety of things, initially your relationship with physical objects. It is to take that aspect that you are told, pay attention to your Muladhara Chakra. And even if you don't take another class with me or for some reason you're not able to come, okay? do that for a month. Then after a month, some people might take longer time, some might take shorter time. Okay? Graduate to the next chapter. 